everybody and welcome to the follow-up video that I'm making here for Kramer's Rule. It's a follow-up to my last video in which we concern ourselves with finding the solutions to a 2x2 two two system or a, I guess you could say a system of order 2 uh, assuming that there are as many equations as there are variables. Two equations, two variables. In this instance you see here we have a 3x3 three three system um, or a system of order 3 in which we have three equations, three variables. And, and since it's a, a system of order 3 we can go ahead and use uh, Kramer's Rule but recall that Kramer's rule is only applicable when you have just as many equations as you do variables, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and dig into this one, assuming that we've already kind of seen my last video on, on Kramer's rule, or at least you're somewhat familiar with it, but re refreshing our memories on some topics here, starting with the fact that uh, we're going to go ahead and create what we call the coefficient matrix for this system. And all it did was, co uh, you know, consist of the coefficients of our variables here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and refer to this for the sake of simplicity, uh, matrix A, but uh, you're going to realize here, of course, since we have as many equations as we do variables, this is inevitably going to be a square matrix. So here you're going to see we have coefficients negative 1, 2, and negative 3. Okay, I'm going to cap that one off there. Uh, 2 and, and 1, of course, but recall we need to put in a 0 here, and then last but not least we have 3, negative 4, and positive 4. Okay. Now we're also going to name a, a constant matrix, and this constant matrix uh, does no more than consist of the constants of the system. And in this case, we've got constants 1, 0, and that, that really is a 2. Apologize. Uh, I don't have very good handwriting on this bamboo, but uh, anyways, okay. So now that we have these two matrices, it's always good practice to start by finding the, the determinant of the original coefficient matrix because we're going to be using that uh, throughout the entire solutions or solution of the system if it exists. Okay, so since we have these set aside, let's go ahead and run the determinant of matrix A. Okay, so the determinant of matrix A would be equal to the determinant. Remember, we use absolute value bars. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in: negative one, two, three, two, zero, four. Sorry to read it by columns. Um, I suppose I should be reading it by rows in order to be consistent here. But find the determinant of a 3 by 3 Recall this, this um, basically involved us extending the first two columns over here. And of course, this is not the only way to do this. So, so please, if you're another fellow math person, don't cringe. I know I'm doing this for my students specifically. But uh, with a 3 by 3 we can use this method. But in general, we would expand by using minors and cofactors. But okay, to find the determinant of this, we need to find the product of the the three main diagonals here, and I hate to say main diagonals because there's really only one main diagonal, but when, you know, I say four diagonals, but notice this one here, this product had a zero in it, so that's kind of nice, but we say, okay, so zero plus now the product of this diagonal here, so two times one times three, which produces six plus, and then we say, okay, so three times, negative three times two is negative six times positive four is totally positive 24. So we say going forward, we have a sum of 30. So the sum of the these products here. And then going backwards, we say, okay, so we got 4 times 2 times 2, uh, but this is minus here. 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16, 16 plus, okay. Now a negative 4 times negative 1, essentially, because 1 is the multiplicative identity, is going to give us a product of 4 and then plus, and there you see our 0 again. You're going to find out that zeros in a system are very beautiful when you're trying to solve these things. But we have 30 minus, and in this instance, we came up with the sum of 20. So, so we have the determinant of matrix A. This is a very important number. Keep this in your pocket. It is 10. Okay. So now on to the generalization using Kramer's rule. Okay. We say the general solution here, or not general solution, but the specific solution to this system involves an ordered triple. And the nice thing about this ordered triple, if we're using Kramer's rule, is uh, the fact that all three of its coordinates here involve a denominator of 10, or we said the determinant of the original matrix A. All we have to do now is really fix some things into place, um, but what we're going to say, okay, since we're solving for x in this part of the solution, then we say y here and z here, and now I'm kind of wishing I left myself more room, but uh, let's go ahead and, and, and rewrite the original matrix, but here's the thing. Since we're solving for x in this instance, we're going to insert these constants into the original x column in place of the original uh, x coefficients. Uh, and again, we're doing that because we're solving for the x. The x is here, so 1, 0, 2. And then everything else we're just going to kind of copy and paste. We said 2, ne 0, negative 4 is what we had here in the beginning. And we say, okay, so this was negative 3. Wow, I'm not very adept at this. Negative 3, 1, and 4. Okay, so now that that's put in, um, I suppose we could go ahead and 
extend the first two columns, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, negative 4. Okay, so now for y, oh wow, we're really going to be squeezing this in, but we're going to insert the constants in for our y column where the original y coefficients used to be. So now our original x coefficients were negative 1, 2, and 3 uh, respectively if we're going column wise here. Inserting the, the constants now, we have 1, 0, and 2, and then we have negative 3, of course, negative 3, 1, and 4. And I'm going to go ahead and extend these first two columns on this matrix here. And I'll tell you what, we're going to kind of pour outside the, uh, the parentheses here. And I apologize. But uh, sorry for Z. Let me grab my eraser tool here. It's just, uh, ooh. Um, actually, what we'll do is we, I suppose, could paint this in. It's black. Fade to black. Very good. Rolling Stones song, if you're a Stones fan. All right, so we got that out of the way, and we'll switch back over to our white paint. Okay, and then in the very, very last column, of course, last but not least, we say, okay, our Z matrix. But in this case, we're inserting, of course, our constants in for our Z column. So now we've got uh, negative 1, 2, and 3, 2, 0, and negative 4. And last but not least, we have um, our constants in here. So we say 1, 0, 2. And if at any time you think you've got the hang of this, you can always pause the video and stop listening to me ramble on. Um, 2, 0, and negative 4. Okay, so we say this is the solution to this system that's written very skewed, and I apologize. But anyways, okay, we're going to go ahead and calculate these determinants here, but that's all we really have left to do is to calculate these three determinants. So um, just kind of going through this with my eyeballs here. I hope you can follow with me, but we say, okay, so for the first determinant here, we have 0 plus 2 times 1 times 2 is 4 plus negative 3 times 0. We'll just go ahead and stop there is 0 minus now, uh, going backwards, 2 times 0 times 4 is 0, plus 1 times 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, plus we say 3 times 0, and we can just basically wrap it up at that point. So we have 4 minus negative 4, that's really important, but you actually end up with uh, 8. So for the x part of our solution here, we have over 10, we have negative 8. Okay, and we'll come back down to that, and this is kind of our scratch work here for... Uh, for this determinant. So now, so now let's do some scratch work here for this determinant, but we have 1 times, okay, negative 1 times 0, 0, plus uh, 1 times 1 times 3 is 3, and then negative 3 times 2 times 2 is uh, negative 12, unless I'm not paying attention. Uh, okay, and we say 1 times 2 times 4, now we're going backwards down the three opposing diagonals here, but 1 times 2 times 4 is 8, this is plus negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1, uh, times positive 2 is negative 2, so negative 2, and we're going to sum this now with negative 3 times 0. That is brilliant. I love it. And so we say, okay, so we've got uh, negative 9 minus uh, 6, which presents us with a sum of negative 15. There's that one there. And so we say, okay, so negative 15, negative 15 tenths. So far, we've got things that are going to reduce splendidly. And then last but not least, let's run this determinant over here since I'm constantly running out of space on this canvas. But uh, negative 1 times 0 times 2, of course, is 0 plus uh, 2 times 0 times 3 is 0 plus 1 times 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 going forward. And this is the difference between that and, okay, so 2 times 2 times 2, I love 2 cubed, another 8, uh, plus negative 1 times 0, we well, can forget about it plus, um, and then here you have this 1 times 0 times 3, and it's just 0. So negative 8 minus 8, you end up with negative 16, of course. But we come down here, we say, okay, so negative 16 tenths. Now, of course, you must realize here, this is our ordered triple. Uh, since we came up with the solution, two things uh, are should be very apparent, I hope. Uh, but one of them is this, that we have three planes that are consistent at this one ordered triple, x, y, and z. And also this, we did not have a singular matrix to begin with. That's right. That is, if you had an inconsistent system of, of linear equations, you got to realize that you would have ended up with a determinant of zero in the first place. So as much as you might be going, oh man, there's no solution, you also get to say, yeah, but it saved you from doing all this work. You could just say there's no solution, yay for us, okay, or maybe infinitely many solutions. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and simplify these down. You, you end up with negative 4 fifths, okay, for, for your x value. And this simplifies down into negative 3 halves. And, of course, we have here, let's see, 2 goes into there. So negative 8 fifths. 
So not even common denominators here. And, and of course, uh, we could have solved this system with linear combinations, but uh, imagine, you know, you're, you're a high school student. You, this is what you like to do in your spare time. I'm almost certain, probably not. And of course, what do you love more than, than solving systems? Oh, uh, rational answers with, with really funky numbers. And by the way, in my opinion, these aren't funky. But um, anyways, enjoy the vid.